And we're not doing anything to the bottom equation, so let me just rewrite it. And we're going to add the two equations together. You all okay with that? All right, I'm just double checking my work as I go along, trying to make sure I didn't make a mistake. So I have a negative 5y plus 5z equaling the 10. All right, you all in agreement with me? Don't even look like you're agreeing with me. I left on the two. The negative with the negative at the top, and I had on negative two negative first. Okay. So it's, it's correct now. All right. So the to negative times the negative gave me the positive. Yes, ma'am. All right. Y'all okay with that grouping? Mm-hmm. Probably good. Yeah, I just did a different letter. No, the same one, but I did the bottom just by two. So I had positive. Oh, maybe you had these flip flopped in terms of the order you wrote them. Yeah, or I eliminated something different. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think you eliminated Y's. Yeah. <coughs> All right, over here, we got to continue with, if we decided we wanted to eliminate X's here, we have to continue that pattern. We no longer have a choice. Okay. Okay. All right, so we got to multiply by a negative 4. Thanks, John. equation and distributing a negative 4. And the bottom equation we're just going to rewrite. And then we're going to add the two equations. Once again, I'm just going back, trying to double check. I need to copy a sign down wrong. Alright, looks good there. So I have a negative 5y plus 6z equaling to 7? Yes. So far so good? Alright, so let's number those equations. We've already used 1, 2, and 3, so I'm going to use 4 and 5. Are you okay with that? 4 and 5. Alright, so I need to group 4 and 5 together, so I'm just going to work right over here and group them together. 4 and 5. Those two equations. So let me rewrite what I have. Alright, so 
I'm noticing I'm using equation four. I'm using equation four. So in place of z, what are we going to put? We're going to put a negative three. should we be picking? Okay. I'm getting all the A's. Okay. Yeah. Tell me it's just a foreshadowing of what's going to happen. Alright, so let's kind of summarize because I agree with you. I really didn't have enough board space, so let's just kind of summarize what happened. I ended up deciding to eliminate X. Do we have to eliminate X? No. We could have picked Y, could have picked Z, doesn't matter. We decided to eliminate X. Grouped one and two together, two and three together, and eliminated x's, which gave me equation four and five. With equation four and five, I have to eliminate another letter. I went with y's, ended up with my z. From there, I'm plugging it into either four or five. I picked four. From there, after I solve for y, I'm plugging into equation two to find x. Any questions on that one? I mean, was it a sign problem? And once again, how can you check to see if that order triple is correct? <laughs> so all three of these, right? All three. Has to check in all three. But doesn't. Johnny would have count, caught his mistake. He would have caught his mistake by plugging it in at the end and noticed it didn't work. Also, if you're ending up with some bizarre answers, like 71 over 1,003. Yeah, that's usually a sign something's wrong. A single digit number? I would say normally, but they also will have some fractions as long as it's pretty simplistic. Not bizarre. All right, any clarification needed on that problem? We're back to some more factoring. Factoring just never goes away. Y'all might love it by now.
information from phone number 19. is asking us to factor, right? Mm -hmm. Before we do anything else, we need to check for greatest common factor. Does this have a greatest common factor? Yes. 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 Three, and what else can we think Three AB. Three AB. Three AB. Yep. So if I factor out a three AB, what am I left with in my first term? Two A squared. Correct. Minus 13 A. Minus 15. Minus 15 A. Taking that greatest common factor out makes a big difference. So we have 2a squared minus 13a minus 15. Can we factor that further? No. no. I mean, yes and no. Yes and no. No. We don't know yet, right? Let's try. Minus 15 plus 2. All right. 2 times negative 15 is? Minus 30. Are there any factors of a negative 30? 15 and 2. 15 and 2. What would the signs in those have to be? Negative 15. Negative 15. Plus, plus 2. Plus 2. So I'm going to rewrite this. Don't forget about our 3AB. We won't worry about it for right now, but remember it will be part of the answer. So 2A squared. Plus 2A. Yeah, I'll put the 2A with the 2A squared. Minus 15a minus 15. Do my grouping from here. What can I take out of that first grouping? 2a. Leaving me with a plus 2. I'm going to go with plus 1. Right, because we're taking that 2a out, so 2a times 1 will bring us back to 2a. What can I take out of that second grouping? 15. Negative 15. Negative 15, yeah. It leaves with a negative, so let's factor out a negative. What does that leave with? 8 plus 1. Right, we did factor out a negative, so that will change the sign. And our parentheses have to be the same for it to work anyway, so it's a good one. So my two factors would be 8 plus 1 as my common factor, and then 2 a minus 15 as my other factor. Yep. Don't forget about it. 3AB. So my completely factored answer would be 3AB, A plus 1, 2A minus 15. One of the factors is, sounds the word it, it's going to be C. Any questions on that? Factoring.
and it says subtraction is what it's telling me to do. So how do we get rid of the parentheses when we have subtraction? Distribute. Okay, we have to distribute the sign. And we're only distributing the sign to the grouping after the subtraction, correct? So that'll be minus 9 minus i? Yes. All right, so what do we do now? You condense it. That's right. We're going to condense it by combining like terms. So 2 combined with a negative 9. Negative 7. 5i combined with a negative i. Alright, let's see if we see it on the little sheet. You would think maybe a or b, but they're signs problems, right? So it's going to be none of these. And we still would have gotten it right. <laughs> Johnny, that sounds like something you would say. No, it's not fair. It's not fair. We should do it like that. Alright, questions on that one? Questions? I think for a lot of my students, they start boiling that problem. Yes. And that's not what it's telling you to do, it's saying subtract, so be careful. That's parentheses. Yeah, the parentheses are not next to one another, so it's not indicating a product. Oh, so that's no. when it's... Yes. Oh. Exactly. Oh, All right, we'll leave the last bit of fun to Kirk. Yeah. Oh, so they have special today to work for us. Yeah. Yes. May the force be with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh.
I'm going to call uh, my advance tickets A and tickets at the door D. Now, one of our equations is going to deal with the number of tickets. So, how many tickets were purchased altogether? 15 tickets. That's fine. Just know that your X will be the advance tickets and your Y will be the door. As long as you define them in the problem, the answer is the same. So, the dollar value of the tickets, how much did each advance ticket cost? $8.96. And for simplicity, I'm just going to put 8.9. Right? 8.9 is the same thing as 8.90, correct? Mm -hmm. Same thing. How much was a ticket at the door? 12.5. 12.5. cents. But I can write that as 12.5, correct? D. And how much money was spent altogether? 147.90. 147.90, but as a simpler decimal, I could write it as 147.9. Now, eventually, I'm going to use the elimination method, but can I clean up that second equation a little bit so I'm dealing with whole numbers instead of decimals? Mm -hmm. By what? Well, by what? 10. Yeah, my decimals are in the tenths place, so let's multiply by ten. Once again, I'm just doing that to make it a little bit easier equation to work with. Am I doing anything with that first equation? No. Multiplying by ten is just going to move the decimal over one place on each one. So that's 89a. One thousand four hundred and seventy-nine. So you could work this elimination or substitution. I do have one as my coefficient on A and B. So if you're more comfortable with substitution, you can do it that way. I'm going to try elimination since I already have A and D on the same side. Uh, what letter do you want to eliminate? It really doesn't matter in this case. A. It's a little small. Okay, that's fine. So what would I have to multiply this first equation by? Negative 89. So that is going to give me negative 89a, negative 89b. Negative 1335. And I didn't touch the second equation, so I'm just going to rewrite that one underneath it. Notice that my A's eliminate, that's what I wanted to happen. Negative 89B plus 25D, I think is 36D. Negative 1335, 1479, 7, How much again? 144. 144, thank you very much. So I have 36D equal to 144. On both sides by 36. I get B equal to 4. So D represents the tickets at the door. So there's four tickets. Door. Now let's find out the advanced tickets. Which one is the easier equation to use? If I'm going to substitute it back in. The first one, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to go after this one right now. It'll take a lot more time. So if I know that my door tickets are 4 at A plus D equal to 15, I can replace
replace the even four, and I can just subtract four. So how many advanced tickets were advanced tickets were sold? So they're probably just going to be asking for one of those two choices. Which one are they asking for? The advanced tickets or the four tickets? Advance. So I would pick letter choice A. Is four on there as well? Yes. So be careful what they're asking for. It would have been very easy to go, oh, I got four. That's one of my answer choices. But remember, they were asking for the advance tickets. Any questions on that one? I'm good to go. All right. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Hope, hope awesome. it helps. Good luck on the phone. Uh, if you didn't get any of the answer choices, uh, they're all listed here. Obviously, I was unaware that anyone.